another edition of Brownsville As Is with A4 Shauna. As for Sonia. And today we're in Humboldt, Tennessee to tell you about a tradition of the West Tennessee Strawberry Festival. 85 years strong. Isn't that something? That is amazing. Oh my goodness. A lot of things have been planned, a week long uh, event. And I think we need to go talk to Beth and see what they have on the books for this year. I agree. Y'all, come on. My name is Beth Culpepper. I'm the events coordinator um, at the Humboldt Chamber of Commerce, and we are in Humboldt, Tennessee. We're having the 85th West Tennessee Strawberry Festival. So uh, the first festival started in 1934. Um, if you do the quick math, you'll think, oh, well, this is, should be more than 85 years. Um, we've paused twice, um, World War II. Um, we paused because so many people were going to the war, and then, of course, during COVID-19. Pandemic. So in the early 1930s, there were um, a group of businessmen who um, saw all of the uh, growth from the strawberry crop here in West Tennessee and specifically Humboldt, and they wanted to capture um, all the people that were involved in that industry from canning, packaging, refrigeration, all of the different um, spin-offs from the actual growing of the product. And they saw so many people coming in for that that they were like, how can we harness that and create something um, special for um, a specific event? And so the first festival was just only a couple of days. It only had a couple of events, but by like the second or third festival, it grew to be the week long event that we see today. So I know they had the parade. I know they had um, beauty pageants. That, those have always been around. Um, they were outdoors back then. So that's kind of something you don't ever see today is an outdoor beauty pageant. Um, I know they had like a carnival type event. They also had kind of like a, more like a trade show type thing where different industries or companies could come in and showcase um, what they were offering that could help you with your strawberry product. So that was kind of a big, a big thing during that time too. So the festival today, I mean, you see a lot of the same events that we had um, back at the very first. Um, you know, we still have a car show and um, uh, the beauty pageants and the carnival and the parades. And we have lots of new events too that, you know, where we started a cornhole tournament last year. Um, we have the Berry Idol event, which last year was also our first year for that. So we've kind of um, created a lot of new events that are um, kind of significant to what people enjoy, you know, now here in 2023. Oh gosh, look, I don't even know how many people exactly are behind the scenes. I mean, sometimes we, we joke in our office, like sometimes things get done and we're like, who did that? We don't even know how that happened. But um, people that have been doing these jobs for just years just kind of so quietly take care of things for us. But I would say if I had to put a number to it, 150 or so people, um, there's a lot of uh, overlap too. So if you wanted to count each individual thing that they did, it would, the number would be much higher. Last year, I think our numbers were around um, 77,000 um, for the week. Um, and that was, that was at least one visit. So um, there were obviously people that came multiple times. Um, we see upwards of about 18 counties that they come from and four states. New events. Um, we don't have necessarily a new event, but we have created a new space that we're calling our food court area. Um, food is a big deal here, and it is very uh, hard to get a coveted concessions spot here during festival week. And um, we've just had so many people that are interested in coming and our crowds are just huge in terms of food. And so we've, we've been looking to try to find some extra space where we can add some more vendors. And so um, just, I was driving around town one day and I was like stuck at this red light on Central. Um, and I was looking, I was like, you know, that's a nice big parking lot we have right here. So our senior citizen center is going to be our new um, food court area. And it's a big open parking lot. We're going to barricade it off and stream lights and have tables and just creating an area where if you have young kids too, you feel okay with them just sort of running around and, and not being, um, close to the street or anything like that. So that is a big um, area we hope that takes off this year and is really popular.
We're sort of the very last festival in festival season around here. Um, we're past state testing. Um, and the weather tends to cooperate a little bit more, whatever the case may be, that first full week of May. Um, and, and people really consider it like a, a coming out of hibernation too. And you've not really had a lot of things up until this time of the year, so it was kind of like creeping out a little bit, like the weather's nice, you know, um, it also signals the end of school, so people are really excited about that. And I think also we've just had a group of dedicated people, like the volunteers I spoke about, that just have taken it upon themselves to really make sure that it chugs on. And um, years ago, um, this position that I am in was created um, because we saw that growth and we saw that it was kind of becoming bigger than what... Um, the past just president and general chairman could take on because those people are volunteers and they do normally have full-time jobs. And so this position was created to help um, get over that hump of, um, of, of how much it had grown, like to be able to, to tackle it and uh, maintain the momentum that we had been on or, or were continuing on. Mostly strawberry is my full-time year-round job. Um, we start, we take about a month to clean up everything. Um, I do inventory on all of our stuff and just pay all the bills and just wrap up all the loose ends. And then by about June or July, we really, we start looking at next year. Um, there's contracts we sign a year in advance with different things like bands and fireworks and stuff like that that you have to get on people's schedules you know, pretty early on. We do publications like this booklet and our magazine, and those are um, about a six month process in terms of going out and soliciting, getting the ads and, and creating the ads and editing and all that stuff. So it really, it's turned into a 12th year job. Um, I don't, there are times during the year I have some time, you know, to do some other things with the chamber and stuff like that, but mostly it's, it's festival related. So the West Tennessee Strawberry Festival is May 7th through the 13th this year in Humboldt, Tennessee. Um, we have more than 30 events planned for that week, a lot of which are free, um, very family friendly things. We've got car show, tractor show, pageants, horse show, um, anything that you could think of. Um, we've got something for everyone, I promise you. Well, Sonia, what do you think? 85 years, oh. can you imagine? Cannot, I mean, and people come from all over. She mentioned four different, four or five different states, 77,000 people last year. Oh my goodness. I know. It's, it's a wonderful place to be in May. Yeah, yeah. All right, I think we need to go find some more strawberries or something I like that. I do too. All right, until next time. Until next time. Bye. Bye.